I'm like, we just gonna dance. <laughs> How y'all doing today? Woo, let me hear you in the back. How y'all doing today? Woo! I'm so glad y'all are here. I'm so glad y'all are here. Have y'all been having a good time? Good, good. Is it, how many people here are in trade and travel? I'm in it too, girl. I love that program. That girl who be teaching trade and travel, she's so cool and cute and funny. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> um, so do you guys see my first slide? Okay. So today, oh man, I'm tired. Y'all need to work out. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, guys, so today's conversation is about recession and it's wanting to make sure that you all are prepared if we go through a recession and i'm going to talk to you a little bit different than i've talked to you before and i'm going to talk to you from a different perspective and i need y'all to stay with me today so you might know me as a girl who's made seven figures in a day trading stocks how many people know that and for my people that are a little slow that's a million dollars Seven figures, that's a million, y'all. Uh, <laughs> one of my um, staff members, Dion, she was like, are you gonna tell them about yourself? And I was like, what you mean, tell them about myself? She's like, you gonna introduce yourself? I said, I could introduce myself. Um, Cause I don't know if anybody saw on Instagram. I, you, you saw it? You saw, you want me to introduce myself? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, so I, do I have to, y'all want me to go back to the front of the stage? Okay, hold on. So y'all, for those that don't know, this is how I introduce myself. Okay, you ready? Okay, I'm, I'm not gonna go all the way off because that's a lot, I'm gonna be tired again. So I'm just coming right here, okay? And scene. <laughs> Coming to the stage. <laughs> But she went from being assistant principal of an elementary school, making $60,000 a day, to making a million dollars a year, to making a million dollars a month, to making a million dollars in a day, Terry Egioma! <laughs> I love it, I love it. But yes, guys, I was assistant principal of elementary school, and I was in education for 10 years, but I had been trading on the side as a side hustle. And then I decided, you know what? These people are crazy, and it ain't getting any better. I'm ready to get up out of here. And I made my trading into my full-time thing. And now, on a consistent basis, I make seven figures in a day trading stocks. Yes. And then, you might have also heard, if you didn't hear about the seven figures trading stocks, you might have heard about the eight figures monetizing that skill set. So once I started trading and traveling the world and people started seeing me on Instagram all over the place, they said, Terry, teach us how to do it. And I said, no. I, I just left education. What y'all talking about? Like, <laughs> this ain't, we ain't playing games. I just left. I just got out of jail. <laughs> and then, <laughs> And, and then people said, no, really, we will pay you to teach us how to do what you're doing, to teach us how to travel all over the world and afford it by trading stocks. 
So I did that. In 2018, I started teaching people how to trade. The class is called Trade and Travel, and now we are the number one course on Teachable. We, <laughs> yes! We've literally been teaching people all over the world, and I've been the number one. So you guys see these, these accolades here, and you might see 2019, 2020. Y'all, I've literally been the number one highest grossing course on Teachable the last three years. 2018, I mean 2019, 2020, 2021, it's a black girl who's made almost $50 million just say, <laughs> teaching people how to trade, right? <laughs> She said, say it again. It's a black girl that's been doing all that. <laughs> Pay me in equity, right? Black equity con. But today, I'm actually showing up a little differently. So if you want to learn about stocks, we're actually teach I'm teaching my whole class live this weekend, and I'll invite you guys at the end. So make sure you stay and be ready for that coupon code. But the thing is, today I'm going to talk to you from the girl who went to MIT who studied international economics in the US and even abroad in Spain. And I'm gonna talk to you about the recession and how to prepare for that recession. I heard somebody say, oh, she's smart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I am, and we're gonna be talking about a lot of stuff, so I'm gonna give you a chance to actually text slides to this phone number, that way you don't have to worry about trying to take all the notes, because I know we'll get into our notebooks and start taking all the notes and forget what I just said. So go ahead and text slides, and then the number is 312-847-2393. And y'all know I'm a teacher, so I can wait. <laughs> If anybody need an extra second, say I. Okay, I'll wait. <laughs> but yep, once you text here, um, it's a community group. I'm getting, I'm new to community, so it'll ask you like, hey, give us permission, that's fine, and then we'll text you over the slides, and you'll have the whole deck that I'm presenting today. Okay? You're welcome, you're welcome. All right, y'all ready now? <laughs> I think I heard a couple no's, but the most people are yes, so let's go. All right. So here's why I think this is so important. And I, I told you today's a little different. I'm showing up at the, as the economist today. So y'all know usually I'm like up and bubbly, but I just want to make sure we're ready. Because what I'm worried about for us is many of us think that we're immune to recession because we did so well in 2020. How many people can honestly admit, clap, clap of hands, that you actually had a pretty good business year in 2020? <laughs> Woo, don't be shy. A lot of millionaires were made. A lot of people's businesses took off. A lot of people first got on the internet. It was a great year. And I was talking to one of my friends, Rachel Rogers. I actually was at her house for her birthday. I don't know if Rachel's here. Rachel, you here? Okay. <laughs> She's gonna be like, you told, told them about me? Yes, girl. Um, but I was talking to one of my friends, Rachel, and I was telling her, I really do think that the, the economy is going towards recession. And she said, well, Terry, it doesn't matter because in 2020 I did so good. And I think that's right. However, this is all the things that were happening in, in 2020. And I'm going to come back to this one. In 2020, we had the government stop the downfall right? And they did it doing these things. So first, there was rent. We didn't have to pay rent. People, and I know people are like, well, I paid rent. Y'all are the good ones. Y'all are the A students that were at the top of the grade, and I appreciate y'all. But there's other people that were like, oh, we ain't got to pay rent. And, and that's of some more money in our pockets, right? And then we had People giving us money for um, student loans. You didn't have to pay your student loan, so that was extra money in your pocket. Then interest rates were low. If anybody noticed, the government immediately when we had COVID, the government brought the interest rates back down. What did that do? That put more money in our pocket for you didn't have to pay as high mortgage rates. You didn't have to pay as high on credit cards. So now your debt payments are a little lower, so you're getting money in your pocket again. Remember, what I'm talking about is we had so much help from the government in 2020 that we were able to do well. But this time, I don't think it's going to be the same. Other things that happened, if you didn't have 
the other things, you got a PPP. If you had a business, there was PPP money that was given out. If you have employees, PPP money. And then if you didn't have that, then there's stimulus. We'll give you some money over here. And the list goes on. Then if you didn't have stimulus, then, oh, you don't have to pay this or you don't have to pay that. What I'm saying is, what if, what if the destruction of 2020 is delayed but not destroyed? Many of us felt like, okay, if we, if we did great in 2020, then we'll be okay. But I'm here to tell you that I think it's still coming. I think it was just delayed. And I feel a little bit about, <laughs> whenever I say that, I feel a little bit like T.D. Jakes, because he, he always has the major alliterations. He's like, how many in here have a dream? Well, I come here to tell you that your dream is not deferred. It is not destroyed. It is just delayed. Do not be discouraged. <laughs> but I'm just telling you guys, in 2020, we had a really interesting situation, excuse me, situation, but it may not be the same. So let's play it out. I want you guys to think through this and welcome in those who are coming in now. Um, <laughs> I'm playing with y'all. I'm a teacher. <laughs> um, so let's play it out in our heads. So what would have happened if the government did not step in? So what if everybody went home? Remember March? Everybody went home. Doors closed. People could not shop at, at stores, so the retail sales went down. Then, when they were at home, their income went down because you didn't have income coming in from businesses. They had to slash income. And then, because some people couldn't even afford that, they had to lay people off, and they stayed. Oh, that was another thing in our pockets, unemployment checks, right? But this time, there's no unemployment check coming. And then after that, because of the unemployment, we can't buy as much stuff, so manufacturing goes down and GDP goes down. You guys, that is called recession. So the five ways that you'll know that we're in recession, and we're not there yet, but the five things that are gonna be impacted is going to be income, and I'm trying to say it the same way it's on the slide for you all, but income, retail sales, employment, manufacturing, and then overall GDP of the world. Right now, we are not in recession yet. A lot of people feel like we're in recession because we're in inflation. And my goal, guys, today is I want you all to leave feeling informed. When somebody talks to you about recession, you'll be able to say, yes, I know all about this because I, I follow Terry, right? So my goal is after this, you'll feel informed. But the thing is, inflation is not recession. People feel like, oh, we're in recession already. But no, unemployment is not low enough yet. Manufacturing sales for some is going down, but it's not down for everybody. So in terms of earnings, Costco had great sales. But then you have Target reporting that they're not going to be able to, to have as great sales. Their stock plunged $100 in the last month. Yep, and I guess I should preface this. If people don't know, we've actually been experiencing a really rough market the last five months. So the reason I'm coming to you and talking to you is because I want you to be prepared, especially if you're not paying attention. Okay, now let me talk to you though a little bit about what inflation is versus what recession is. Inflation is everything feels high. Anybody else feel like, dang, why is gas so high? Why is the milk so high? Baby, we not eating that no more because it just, it's too high. Inflation is because of supply and demand. When we got all this money into the market, then people could pay whatever they wanted to pay. And if the supply is little and people have a whole bunch of money, supply versus demand, then the prices start going up. On the other hand, the government is now trying to raise interest rates. Have you guys been hearing about that? The reason why they're raising interest rates is because they're trying to lower demand. If you raise interest rates the same way we talked about it helping on the other side, putting money back in your pocket, if you raise interest rates, well, now people are paying more in mortgages. Have you noticed that? The housing market is going into correction right now because mortgages are starting to go up because the in interest rates are rising mortgage, excuse me, rising mortgage prices and the cost of the houses are also high. 
So now a house that last year was only going to have an $800 mortgage payment now has a $1,200 mortgage payment. But the reason why they do that is they say, okay, we'll take some money out of the market that will lower demand and we'll, we'll get inflation under control. So inflation is a supply and demand thing, but recession is, is, is different. Recession is those five things I told you about. All right? So give me two claps if you feel like you understand recession a little bit more. Clap, clap. Okay, black people, let's, let's, let's uh, we're going to do one, two. Clap, clap, okay? All right. Are y'all ready? I'm going to do the one, two. Clap, clap. All right, if you understand recession a little bit more, one, two, good job. Y'all so good. Y'all got some rhythm. Y'all so good. (laughs) Good. Okay, great. So now that you understand a little bit more about recession, now let me give you some solutions. All right? So here's the solutions. And once again, if y'all texted slides to that phone number, you have all this in your inbox. So you don't have to, like, worry about taking notes so fast. Solutions. Now, one other thing that if you know me, um, you know, but if you don't, I also went to seminary. So I'm definitely like a Bible girl, and I think that Bible stories pertain to everybody. Yes. Anybody else believe in God in here? <laughs> Woo! And God made the universe. So if you believe in the universe too, I, I still rock with you. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> I'm actually for real, not just playing. I, I rock with you. Um, But here's the thing. I've been reading this story of a guy named Joseph. This is the solution part, right? Joseph, anybody heard that story? The coat of many colors. His his brothers, ooh, y'all. Okay, random deviation. I prayed today, and I said, Lord, tell me what you want them to say. So whatever y'all get today is going to be good. But, um, (laughs) okay, random deviation. Why I even called this wisdom during the famine. So story of Joseph, quick quick version. Joseph had a dream. He told his brothers about the dream, and they said, oh, you're supposed to be ruling over us? So then they threw him in a pit, sold him to, into slavery, and told his dad that he was dead. When he was in slavery, he actually has um, that same skill set of interpreting dreams, and he works his way up in Pharaoh's household and becomes number two in control. A couple years later, Pharaoh has a dream, and, and Joseph interprets it, and he, said, and he says, you know what? We're going to be having great wealth for seven years, and then after that, we're going to have seven years of famine. And then he tells us what to do. I'm about to now tell you what to do, especially based on what Joseph said. But a couple things I also want to tell you from that story, just for anybody out here who's feeling this way, there are some people who have the same talents as you, But God did not bless them because he knew that they would use their talents for evil or for bad. In that story with Joseph, his brothers clearly had the same power to interpret dreams because they interpreted his dream. When he went to his brothers and said, I had this dream, they told him what the dream meant. All these other brothers that could do the exact same thing, but Joseph was raised because they were going to use that gift for evil. So for anybody out who, here who's feeling like, I don't know, like everybody else is doing the thing that I'm doing, just keep on doing it. Keep on using that talent for good because God will bless that. And there can be a ton of other people that have the same thing that you have, but God has something special just for you. We talked about dreams <laughs> de- delayed but not destroyed, right? Another thing from that story, and then I'll finish, I'll go back to to uh, recession, (laughs) the fun recession. But another thing from that story, the brothers later on come back and they think that Joseph is gonna be extremely mad at them because because they sold him into slavery. And he tells them, you know what? It wasn't even about you. God had something better for me. The reason why I was able, like the reason why I'm now in a position to help the world get through this famine is because you did what you did. So I am, I'm, again, destroyed. I am not destroyed. I am not discouraged. I am thanking God that he took me through that. Not that I'm going to be happy about it, but I'm going to forgive. So to anybody else out here who's been thinking, like, why did I have to go through that? Why did I have to go through such a hard time? 
Guys, just know that you are here right now today because of what you went through. And, and there is a reason why you had to have your story and use that story. Because even me, there are some people in my past, you think I'm happy about the stuff I went through in my old jobs? I had a, jo um, I had a boss in one of my jobs who literally tried to destroy me. She told the, all the people on my team, I think I can get her to quit and tried to make everything super hard for me so that I would quit. And I was so discouraged, like why would she do that? Because I wouldn't be on this stage talking to you making $50 million had she not done what she did. So I forgive her and I thank her for what she did because if she hadn't done that, I would not have moved. So there is somebody else in here that needs to know, you guys, it's okay. Forgive them for what they did to you. Move through whatever tough situation because God has something better for you. And it looks good. Okay, back to COVID and recession. <laughs> so here's the solutions, all right? Y'all with me? I'm gonna tell you three solutions. Stay with me to the end. First solution comes out of, of the story I was telling you about. So when, when they had that dream, Joseph says, well, the Pharaoh asked him, well, what do we do? How do we prepare for the famine that's coming? We're in this season of good, seven years of good, and now the famine is coming, what do we do? Joseph told them, I want you to start saving a fifth of everything that you get. We're gonna store it away in a storehouse so that when the famine comes, we'll actually be able to feed all the people. And they did that. They stored it all away for seven years, they stored it all away. That's the same thing I'm gonna tell you. And the reason why I have, um, do y'all, anybody else in here watched the story of, of WeWork? It's called We Crashed. Y'all, there was a portion in there when he says, they have been making money, but their burn rate was $52 million a week. And the truth is like, we go, whoo. But it's all relative, because there's some of you guys, y'all are making good money. Y'all put on Instagram that you done made your six-figure month, and you put on whatever. And then if I asked you what's your burn rate, you may not want to show me your wallet. Because it's also the $600 dinner that you put on Instagram. And I got all these travel stuff, and I'm on luxury, and I'm on this, and that's fine. But during this season, I want you to start preparing for a famine. So I need you to start saving some of that money. Maybe don't take the trip. I know, I'm trading travel. That, that really hurt somebody's feelings. <laughs> they were like, no, Terry, I'm, I'm here to take the trip. I understand, but go with me. The point is, no, I'm just playing. <laughs> really though, I just want you all to be more cautious. So I was talking to my friend, Varick, and um, just a second ago, and he's probably like, dang, Terry, I love you. <laughs> but we were talking about how he was thinking about moving into one apartment, and then he said, well, but I'm gonna be wise. Maybe I need to move into this one right now because I know that something's about to shift in the economy. I want you guys to think the same way. In this season, things are going to change. And I, I tell you, I'm sitting on this stage scared to death because how can I tell you that things are about to change when things have been so good for so long? But I also am telling you, y'all, I'm standing here in faith and I'm saying I want you all to be prepared. If the world and economy changes, let us not be the ones that fall off. There's so many of us that black, black people is who I'm talking about when I say us and women, we start businesses and the statistics show we don't last. So I'm telling you now as a warning, something may shift in the economy and I want you all to be prepared so start saving and just being mindful. All right? All right, I'm gonna keep going. Two, prepare for the pivot. And this is proactively prepare for the pivot. In 2022, everybody got caught off guard. So all of a sudden, you gotta scramble and find a skill. I'm working from home, but I gotta figure out how to sell this on the side. And a lot of good businesses started that way. Selling cakes out the side of the car, whatever you gotta do. 
But in this season, because we're preparing in advance, prepare to have education, prepare to like learn a new skill, prepare. If your job lets you go, what are you going to do? One of the biggest pieces of advice I have is I want you to start checking your bank accounts. Because if for whatever reason the banks start freezing and not giving money out, I want you to make sure that you have enough money saved that you can actually take care of yourself. And you might need to diversify that. So the FDIC insures up to, in some, in some banks, up to 250000 But during COVID, a lot of you all, and I'm talking to you all because I know y'all are doing well and you're about to do well, a lot of you all may have more than that in your account. Just know if something happens, they only have to insure you up to 250000 A way to get around that is open a brokerage account. If you have a brokerage account for investing, many times those are insured higher. I talked to uh, one of my brokerage accounts and they insure up to $26 million versus 250,000. Also start talking to your estate and your will. The thing about it is that if you are in this room right now, you escaped death. And I know that sounds so crazy, but a lot of people actually passed away in COVID. So you all are the chosen special people that made it through. And because of that, I want you to get your stuff in order now. If it's a will, write that thing out. If it's, okay, where does my money go? Do I give it to my daughter? Do I give it to my son? Does my parents get it? Start thinking through that right now, okay? Because like we said, this is your second chance. You just, you just escaped death. So use this wisely. And then let me talk from my expertise. So you guys know that I'm a trader, you know that I make a lot of money trading and I love trading, it's amazing. But advanced situations cause for advanced tools. And in a little bit, I'll, give a, I'll be able to answer a couple questions. But advanced situations call for advanced tools. The way that you're gonna make money in this market is learning how to do one of these three things up here. Short selling, that's making money on the way down in stocks. Covered calls, that's if you have stocks already. Actually here, I'll, I'll break this down a little bit more. Let me say them and then I'll break it down. And then also options in general. Options is 100 shares of a contract sold at one time, okay? So let me break them down. I ain't breaking it all the way down because I'm about to teach it all this weekend. Um, <laughs> but let me break it down some. Short selling. One of the things that's gonna be really important for you is if you wanna short sell, you need to have the right brokerage account. When you open a brokerage account, tell them, I don't want a cash one, I want a margin one. This is so that you can't even know, you can't even short sell. And short selling is selling something high and then buying it back low. So it would be my friend here selling me his backpack for $500 and then going down the hall and buying another one for 100. So he sells it to me, I give him $500. He only has to pay out 100 to get one back. Now he keeps the difference. He keeps $400 and he gets a new backpack. That's what we do with stocks. My friend Myron Golden is about to come up after me. And yeah, Myron. And he was like, Terry, I did this today. And I was like, ah! But the market fell. The market fell today. So I'm, I don't know exactly what he was trading, but I'm assuming it might have been a short sale. A short sale is selling something high and then buying it back low. Learn how to do that. Because as the market continues to fall, you see on here, we're in correction territory in the S&P and the Dow. And then we, at one point recently, oh, let me put, <laughs> at one point recently, we were at the 22% um, down in the NASDAQ, which is bear market territory. So you guys have to start learning how to make money as the market goes down. Second thing is with that, with that covered call, what is that? Anybody in here have stock just sitting in your account? Oh, I'm acting like I can see. Can y'all yell at me? <laughs> Woo! Okay. <laughs> the lights are bright. I can't see you. The hands up. But if you have stocks sitting in your account, and let me go slower because I want to make sure people hear me. If you have stocks currently sitting in your account that are going down, one, you might want to consider selling them and buying them back when they start going higher. You don't have to have them just continue to go down low. But I know for many people that is against their, their policy. They're going to hold these forever, do or die. If that is the case, 
you can sell contracts against your stock. So say for example, I have, and this is a super crash course, please, in this hotel in the Regency, Saturday and Sunday, I'm literally teaching my whole eight week program live. So I'll, I'll give you the link, but y'all can come. Yes. <laughs> if you have stock, um, let's say that you have stock in Apple. Okay, let's do Apple. So say you have stock in Apple and you bought it for 100. Got it? Say you have stock in Apple and you bought it for $100. What you can do is sell a call contract against it that says, I will sell you my current stock, my current Apple stock at 150. And what happens is you'll get a credit just for that contract. And you can tell them, I want to do that at a certain date. So in a month from now, I will sell you my Apple stock for $150. You bought it at $100, but your contract's for $150. So at expiration, if price passes above $150, then you'll just give them your, your Apple, which is fine. You're making money on it. But if it doesn't pass $150, you get to just keep the premium for that contract. I know that sounds like super simple, but that's covered calls. Google it, research it, join Trade and Travel to learn more about it. But the way that you can make money on those stocks that you're holding is called covered calls if you're going to keep it. Last is not even having the stock and just doing options contracts. Options contract is like a contract on a house. So when you buy a house, they give you a contract and they say, okay, I want to have this many shares at, did I get uncute? Okay. I had to dot my face real quick. I'm just playing. But an options contract is like a contract on a house. And it says, okay, I want to buy this many shares at this price at this date. The same way that if you were buying a house, you would say, okay, I want to buy this house at this price on this closing day. Right? So it's a contract. Now, if a Walmart comes in or a Whole Foods comes in to your neighborhood at the same time, now that contract is worth more money. So now you can say, okay, I, I surely am going to hold on to this contract because I have this really great store coming in and my value of my contract just went up. Or if something happens, like find out that there's a sewer leak, the value of that contract can go down. But the thing about it is the contracts, trading contracts, is a lot cheaper than trading stocks. And so options is literally trading contracts. Oh, I got this contract to buy this stuff, almost like wholesaling. Anybody in here heard, heard of wholesaling? Yeah, they, I think they might even been talking about it here. Just like that, in wholesaling, they take that contract and then they just sell it to somebody else. Yep, I got that house over here and I'm gonna give it to this person. Right? I'm going to give the contract to buy it to this person. That's options. Those are the three ways that you're going to make money in this market. What I don't want you to do, though, is just to have hopium because the last 10 years, the market's been rising high, so you just keep buying in as things go down. That's great, but it may not work during recession. All right, so last thing, and then this is the live. Last thing I will say is that recessions take time. So you may not see this right away, and you may be like, Terry don't know what she's talking about, and that's okay. In the recession in 2008, it took 18 months for that. So it actually started in 2007. So there's probably some people in 2007 that were like, dang, I wish somebody would have told me before 2008 came. Many people, Jamie Dimon, Elon Musk, have been talking about, we think a hurricane is coming in the economy. If that is true, I've just given you three things that you should be doing to make sure that you're prepared. You don't have to completely change your lifestyle, but start saving, start preparing for the pivot, and then learn some advanced tools because advanced situations and economies require advanced tools. All right? Now, here's the link. If you do want to come to the live, we have sold like a ton of tickets already. There's like almost no more room, but I did add a couple more seats because I wanted to make sure anybody at Black Equity Con can come. So the link is tradeandtravel.com slash live. And then to get $500 off, you use the promo code options.
If you're like, Terry, I need to know this right now. I actually agree with you that I think a recession is coming, and I need to know how to get some more advanced tools like shorting and options, and I'm busy, so I, I would love to learn it live in person in two days versus eight-week online course, sign up, for the, sign up for the live. We're doing it here at the hotel, so just extend your room a little bit. I heard that there's storms coming out, so some of you guys, you don't want to be waiting at the airport anyway, so come. If not, <laughs> ain't it true? Somebody, you, the person laughing was like, yeah, my flight did get canceled today. I was going to have to stay here. Yep. And then for those that did get so blessed to make a flight home, you can also just check out my free webinar. If you go to tradeandtravel.com, start with the free webinar, and then you can go into the course. But that is it. I hope that you all feel more prepared and knowledgeable now. It says I have a little more time. Does anybody have any questions? I have one, and then I heard I do over here. Let's start here first. Hey, good to see you. I need to ask you a question. Hi, Terry. Good to see you in person. I wanted to confirm what Terry said here. Um, there really is something brewing, right? Stagflation heading towards recession. And, you know, I appreciate you for sharing this because many people in our community don't get this information ahead of time. At this morning, this inflation print was 8.6%, right? The only way you can bring inflation down is by reducing demand which literally is recession. So we wanted to kind of echo what you've shared. Uh, but my question for you is, the markets have been really volatile. And I'm personally, like, I don't know much about trading, but I heard that volatility is a trader's paradise, right? So my question for you is, how are you kind of walking your students through the process of the markets are heading up from the morning to like mid afternoon, and then it ends the day down. Like I'm kind of curious, right, as someone who's looking from the outside into what you do, how are you helping your students navigate that? Because the markets are quite volatile. Thank you, coach. So I, so I don't know if y'all noticed, but when he was asking the question, I started smiling so big because I make some of my best money in the morning, that first hour of the trading day, and that's called gaps in Globex trading. So over, <laughs> anybody in here in a 10,000 in a day club? Now you, tell me what you made. Oh, in front of everybody, okay. 7,500? 750, okay. That's still good, congratulations. Y'all give it up for her, she's making money. In the market. So y'all, there, and the reason why I said $10,000 in a day, in my class we have $1,000 in a day club, but my VIP students who have been using the te techniques I'm talking about, the gaps in Globex trading, they now have a $10,000 in a day club, where they've been making over $10,000 on a regular basis. What we do is we look at charts, so you're still looking at charts and formations the same way that you would for just normal trading, but this time in the, in the beginning of the day, you're able to see a gap overnight. You can ride that the first hour of the trading day. After that first hour, then it kind of calms down. That trade's not valid anymore, and now you're going back to just your regular trading, but that's, the, that's one of the big things that we've seen success with, gaps in Globex trading. Ah, she said, it's so easy. <laughs> Good question. I have a few more minutes. I think there was another one. Did I answer the question? Oh, is this? Sure. Uh, <laughs> it's all good. Um, but, yeah, she's right, though. It is easy. <laughs> um, so my question for you is, um, because again, the, the markets are very volatile right now, and I day trade primarily, so I play gaps, I play you know, the chart patterns, the you know, candlestick patterns, all that. But 
in terms of a day trend, uh, swing trading perspective of you know long term betting on the market, uh, market going down. What is your interpretation on how do you evaluate like not necessarily how far because that's time in the market, but typically the length of how long it drops down. Like typically, where do you see the bottom, and then where do you see the potential top? Like, do you think it's going to take three months to like you know hit a bottom, and then eventually like six months to raise back up? You know that. Good question. So you're basically asking, how long do I think it will take before we get to a bottom and before we start reversing? You know what? And for everybody here, one of the things that I've learned as I've been trading now for 12 years, one of the things that I've learned is I really don't care how long it's going to take. I'm just going to do what the chart says right now. And that's what I've been, yeah, that's what I've been going with. Because if I see a pattern, like if I see, um, we, we call them buyer's levels and seller's levels, but if I see a place where there's a buyer's level, I'm going to take that trade because that's what my trading plan says. And if I see that it's gone through my buyer's levels two times in a row, then I feel like, okay, now we're reversing a little bit. Now we need to be shorting. And then on the way back up, same thing. If it's coming through my, my seller's level and it's passing through it, I'll, I'm gonna, my trading plan says take the trade the first time. After two times, then I'm like, okay, now we're reversing, let's go long. But in terms of how long I think it's gonna take, I still think it's going towards recession. So every time it comes up, I'm thinking this is a, still a bear market rally and that it'll still start falling back at some point. So if I'm in the trade and I catch it, great. But if not, then I just wait for it and look for a time to short. For me, I, because I'm, I'm more active, I'm getting out within probably two weeks. But if, if the trade has not reached the seller's level, then I'll let it run. Mm -hmm. That's good. Cool. Yes, I will be here tomorrow. I saw a question over here and then a question here. How about the person over here just come stand here? And then I know they're going to yell at me because Myron is coming up next and y'all want to hear him. So let's do these two. Can I do three questions? That's a yes. <laughs> okay, one, two, and then I think somebody was walking with we'll you. Good afternoon. Thank you for everything you do for us. My question is, well, to uh, piggyback off of him, I normally, once I hit my goal, I just get out. So I leave a lot of money on the table. I guess a good trader doesn't want to take all the profit. Um, where do we, so I'm consistent. I hit my goal every day. What do I do in terms of taxes? How do I donate my money or move my money around so I'm not giving all my money to Uncle Sam when it's time to do my taxes? Can you refer me to someone? <laughs> thank you, thank you. So taxes. Um, first of all, congratulations on hitting your, your goals on a regular basis. If anybody's been worried about trading, that is a great example of you can do it. And especially when I first started, my goals were $300 a day as assistant principal. If your goals are small, I have one student, she just wants to make 100 a month so she can get a massage. If your goals are small, you can hit those on a regular basis. So don't be afraid. Don't think you have to have a ton of money. You can do it. Just be disciplined. Taxes. When you get to the seven and eight figure level, I moved to Puerto Rico. That was, <laughs> that was my solution. <laughs> um, but one thing that I will say is a couple things on taxes. If you have multiple businesses, then having other businesses will help against your trading income. Just make sure that you, that you apply to be an active investor. It takes about a year with the IRS, and I'm not a CPA. So talk to your CPA. I'm just telling you some things that I've been told. But it takes about a year to get approved as an active investor or like a, a day trader by the IRS. When you are approved in that, and like I said, talk to them. But when you're approved in that way, you can treat your investing like a business. And you can actually write off all expenses against it, which includes probably your cable bill because you're watching CNBC and your computers and all that kind of stuff. But then on the other side, you can um, also write off any losses, all of it, instead of just $3,000 capital gains. So thank you. 
Um, so make sure that you are actively applying to be an active business owner as a trader. So that's one. And then two, make sure that you write off all of your other business expenses on your taxes and it'll go against your trading. That's a couple things I would say if you don't want to move to Puerto Rico. <laughs> I think that was the last, last question and then we'll get off. Thank you, I'm gonna make mine real quick. So do you teach um, like fundamental, a fundamental foundation for your portfolio, like stocks that you should just hold? Do you teach that within your trade and travel or is it strictly like options, short, shorting and cover calls? Thank you. Great question. So I start with the basics. So the first four weeks are, I feel like I put this down, but the first four weeks are how to pick good companies. Welcome in everybody. The first four weeks are one, how to pick good companies. Then we go into risk management. How do you protect yourself from losing? Then the third thing is reading charts. How do you know when to get in and out of a trade? That's gonna come from reading charts. And then we look at how do you have a trading plan? So in the fundamentals, that's what I teach as an active investor. I'm not really teaching buy and hold though, cause that's not my, my thing. And then weeks five through eight, we go into shorting is week five. Week six is how to um, do gaps in Globex, and then seven and eight are the options. So y'all, my time is up. Thank you all so much, and if you wanna come to the live, just check us out. Yeah.